Hello and welcome to another hobby video. In this video I will be painting Bretonian men at arms. And, <laughs> disclaimer, I haven't painted a single one yet. You're, you're coming on the journey with me. I've been looking at the miniatures and then I've been looking at the colour palette in the instructions that came with the models. And then I've worked out what I think I'm going to do and what I hope works. <clears throat> And, uh, and and we shall see. So looking at the at the um, at the sort of cover art, I can see there are different colours. They use there's, there's lots of leather on these guys, and really, the hood and the shield are, only, are the main bits that are showing the the heraldic colouring. So I am um, I want a couple of leather options and. And there's a cat attack already. Wow, we're a minute in, and there's a cat attack. <laughs> what? Okay. So, uh, I've done some vague holding of pots up to this to get the colours approximately right. I want them to kind of look like this. And what I have decided to go for is, uh, for my two tones of... Say hello to the viewers, Lemmy. You've been sat sound asleep for ages. Okay, so I want two tones of leather. So I'm, I'm going for... I'm going to try Agrax. And I can't see what the pot next to it is because Lemmy's sat in front of the phone. Ah, XV88. So I'm going to try Ag Agrax and XV88 as the main colour. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I want a whole load of base colours... And then I'm going to wash the model in Agrax. I want the peasants to look kind of peasanty. When when I've got sort of clean metal armor on the knights, that will be uh, that'll be different. I'll be doing a different effect. Thank you. I'll be do I'll be doing a different effect uh, on them. So I've primarily gone for base colors here because I want to be able to put them on in one coat. And I want to be able to, um, then I want to be able to agrax over the whole model. So I don't have to do different stages. I want these to be quick. Um, yeah. Then once I've seen how well the whole model looks after it's been agraxed, I'll decide which bits need any dry brushing or highlights just to make certain parts of the model pop. And, uh, and we'll see how this turns out. So paints wise, and I've, I'm guessing my painting order. Normally I work this out. Oh my word. Normally I've got this worked out by this point. But I'm guessing my paint order on what I think is going to be the largest. Hello. What I think is going to be the largest amount of um, coverage. Basically I do the, the, as a general principle, I start with the biggest one first. Doesn't matter if I go over any of the lines. And then smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So I have to be neat the smallest amount of time and I can be messy the largest amount of time uh, but obviously the fiddliness of the model is a factor as well so I think what I'm going to do is the two leathers then the metal then the wooden hafts then the heraldry red first then black on the basis that on the black background what I'll do is I'll loosely paint in the red quarters and then uh, sharpen it up with the black because the black will go over the red in one coat whereas the red will go over the black in multiple coats i expect then i think i've got uh no this is andrew just what's this lemmy's hiding behind uh rakarth flesh so some of them have got sort of um uh like bits of hosiery so for example this guy the archer he's got sort of hose on on his lower legs um, I want them to sort of be off-white and a little bit dirty, so going for Rakarth with that. Cadian Flesh Tone for the flesh. That's obviously the faces are one of the bits that's going to need the most attention, especially after being Agraxed. But they, I want to be able to ally these with my Empire. And my Empire, 
uh, were first started way back in Fantasy Battle when I had a specific style of painting and I don't want them to look too different next to each other. And that style of painting was a couple of colours on the model and drown it in Agrax. So I want to uh, have it match in a way but also I want the heraldic devices to pop and I want the knights to look clearly cleanier and shinier. Uh, then I've got Retributor Gold for any of the little gold bits like the the, um, the 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 champion might have gold on the hilt of his weapon. There might be a little bit of detailing on the helmet they've been given. Uh, and then there is stitching on some of them, which I'm going to pick out in Celestra Grey, again, to be sort of off-white. Then we have the trusty old Agrax. So I don't know how many I'm going to go through. I don't know whether I'm going to go, ah, I'll just do the whole lot, or whether I'll do a couple with all the colours and then see how it looks. Um, very much depends how the muse takes me. Uh, I'll see you on the other side. If I ever get my desk back. Yes, I'm talking about you. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I have painted all the base colours. They're a little sloppy in place. Come on, focus. That's better. They're a little sloppy in places, but they normally are when you're about to... Well, I I don't worry about that when I'm about to coat something in, a, in an ink slash shade. But I'm feeling a little ambivalous because... Ambivalous? Ambivalent? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I want to do it because... They look pretty crisp, and there's part of me that thinks the the sh the Bretonian shields, even on peasants, wouldn't be that um, that dingy. Plus, they are going to have these shiny white transfers on them, and I've either got to dull the whole shield down with the transfer on it. And dulling down a white transfer with just a bit of a bit of agrax is not gonna look very good. So I'm trying to think what I do about that. Because I think the the I think the the footmen themselves should look pretty um pretty grungy. But maybe not the shield. So well, you can see how sloppy I've been there with that. There's loads, there's loads of bits missed where I've gone over the lines. Um, the only bit I took real time on was the um, was the shield, and even then, I know the center line will be hidden by the transfer. So uh, even there, I've not been quite as picky as I would otherwise be. I mean, you can see there there are a couple of little bits that. I would have tidied up if they weren't being covered up. Um, I tend to find finding something prominent to do well on a model that you've done sloppily makes the model look fine. It draws the attention entirely away from the sloppiness. <sighs> so, um, I've got a few different things going around my mind. I'm thinking I could do, I could add Grax the whole model. Then just wipe my thumb down the shield so the grime is just at the edges. I could try not to actually get the Agrax on the shield. Because I, I am going to be pretty free and liberal with the brush. I could paint it on. If it doesn't look alright, I could go over the red. But that is another step in the process. Keen to eliminate that. I could maybe put the transfer on first, then Agrax it. But I, I'm, I'm not going to try that unless everything else fails. Because I don't think that's going to look very good. I could thin the Agrax down and layer up a couple of coats so I don't get any blotches, but I'll still have the problem with the axe sticking out. So, what I think I'm going to try is I think I'm going to try a couple of models, just Agrax in the whole model, then I'll do a couple of variations of running my thumb over the shield or leaving the shield blank or just going around the edges. And if they don't turn out, then I think I'll apply the transfers first and then go for multiple coats of thinned down Agrax. Yeah, but one thing at a time. I'm going to see what a couple of them look like after I Agrax them up. 
so here we are after the Agrax Earthshade. And so what I ended up doing was just a light coat all over the shield. And I rubbed my thumb over the center of the shield. Um, so it's still got a bit of, using this one, it's still got a bit of um, sort of gathering color at the corners, um, which I think is going to add to the slightly untidy effect. Uh, and I think there, I've obviously turned some around so you can see them from behind. Um, they're going to look fine for rank and file. Pretty pleased with those. The only thing I didn't apply any ink to was this one. I wanted this banner to be a bit crisper. I did the rest of the model, just not the not the banner. And the Grail Monk has turned out reasonably well. It's, um, the, like I, I think I said earlier, it's it's been a couple over the course of a couple of weeks. This video, um, I want them to be able to sort of um, fit in with some of the grimier uh, style of models I've got with my empire, uh, and also I want the peasants to look grimier than the knights. When I do the knights, I'm going to use a, a different scheme for the shading to make them go a bit more. What I'm, I, I've also uh, glued some sand to the base of PVA glue and painted it in Rhinox in ready for basing because that takes quite a time to dry. Obviously, the, the, the sand and the glue has to dry and then the Rhinox has to dry and it takes quite a while when it's in and amongst the sand. So, that's all done. That's all ready. What I need to do now is see how the uh, transfers look, see how well they look. Um... See if they're too white and they pop too much. Mm, not sure how which way that's going to go. Uh, then, yeah, I'm going to give that a go and see how that looks. Okay, so here we are. We're a couple of steps further down the line than I thought we were going to be. Oh, come forward. Um, so... At first, when I was putting the transfers on... I thought it was a bit too white. I thought it doesn't look right. And oh, it's too bright. And ah, made a mistake. And all that uh, all that stuff. But it really did grow on me. Um, and I think when it was sat next to other ones without the white axe on, um, it, it was quite a marked contrast. However... Um, I did what what I wanted to do was all what I did was I lightened the um some of the metallics. I did a very light edge dry brush on the shield with iron breaker and then just round the rim of the hat and um onto the boop, and onto the weapon just to make it pop a little bit. And I am finding, well, certainly to my eye, the um, the additional pop from the silver sits nicely against the white and sort of dampens down the uh, it's too bright effect. Um, and that's the only dry brushing I've decided to do, the dry brushing or additional heighting, ha additional highlighting after the ink. I had to do a little bit of tidy up on the standard because um, I didn't want to use... Because I used Microsol and Microset to put the transfers on. You put the Microset, you paint it onto the, uh, the surface, then you put the transfer on, then you paint it over the transfer, then you leave it to dry. Then when it's dried, you paint over it in Microsol and let it dry and do it again, and let it dry, do it again, and let it dry. Sometimes you only have to do it once, sometimes a couple of times. These took two coats, and from most angles, you can't tell that's a transfer. You really have to make it catch the light to know it's a transfer, and even then, it's quite dulled down. Um, unfortunately, though, those chemicals... You see, what you, what you need to do is... On a shield, you paint the whole sh um, internal part of the shield because then any discoloration is uniform and goes across the whole shield. I didn't want to do that across the entire banner. 
So I had to go around the edges and touch it up where it's stained. So I don't know if you can... Again, if I just catch the light right there, you go. You can see one of the stains there. That's what I've missed, actually. And then uh, you can just about see where I've touched it up around the edges. Just here and here. But it has been touched up. Then, on the bases, I dry brushed with towel white ochre. And then Shepherdy Bone. And went round the rim in steel lead and drab. And then used, what is it, Army Painter Flock? Army Painter Battlefield's Grass Green. Some Flock with some PVA glue. This recipe, this Rhinoxide Tower Light Ochre Ushepti Bow with Sand, was actually in a White Dwarf way back when. When it was scorched brown, vomit brown, and, and bleached bone were the colours, and it was a Steel Legion drab, what was it called? Ah, I can't remember what it was called. Um, yeah, no matter. Um, so, they are finished, and I have just... A little bit of random plastic shaving there. Uh, I've just cracked open all my old... Um, movement tray stuff uh of course but with the change from the 20 mils as the standard to the 25 mils as the standard basically everything's gone up a size none of my old trays were right but i've been cannibalizing some of the old ones and making them the right um uh setup for these but i have had the dilemma this isn't their tray but i've had the dilemma because what i did with all my old trays was leave the edge plain so that it kind of looks like the edge of a base it looks like the edges uh, edge of the bases but i'm not so sure i like that um and i'm i'm toying with the idea and i also don't like this from the pictures i've seen so i'm struggling with two things i'm not so sure i like uh, the idea of repeating the base texture on the thing but then it's sort of then you've got a sort of hovering rolling hill um mm, so I'm not sure. Here's the base. Let's see what we can do. All right, this is what I went with. Looks okay, just in general. Reasonably happy with it. Let's see how it looks with the minis. I have to say, I'm reasonably pleased with that. Uh, there's a little bit more play in the tray than I had. Well, oh, that I had wanted. I quite like them quite neat and tight, but uh, we're only talking a couple of mil, and that it does help where things are, don't quite line up between the ranks. Um, can't really see the banner from here. You can from there, though. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Nice ranks of, uh, of men at arms. Can't really see the. I was going to say plague monk. Can't really see the Grail monk with the cursed cryptic. His sort of heads behind his little shrine. But there we go. Cryptic, not cryptic. Sort of a uh, Nurgle, Death, Necron, peasant. No, not a Nurgle, Death, Necron, peasant. There we go, though. So that is how I have painted this unit of Bretonian men-at-arms. I'm really quite pleased. Um, yeah, and that's that's where we're going to leave it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did and you want to support me, check out the description of this video for ways of doing that. You can join our hobby Discord, uh, channel memberships, uh, affiliate links, uh, Element Games, Patreon, all sorts of stuff like that if you want to. Or just throw me a thumbs up, help the algorithm. Uh, or just enjoy it for enjoying its sake. I am good with that too. So like I said, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye for now.